Forever DM plays a character and is brought to tears by a first-time DM and best friend. Hi everyone, All Things D&D is back with another story. For most, D&D is a creative outlet for fun, adventures, and good times. For others, D&D can be the thing that helps drag them out of a deep depression, with the help of friends and teamwork. This story shows us that D&D can help us through our worst of times. I am my group's forever DM. Our core group has been gaming together for more than a decade. A new player joined our group, and he volunteered to DM and give me a break. I'll spare you the details, but it did not go so well. Railroading, a lack of agency, and some other issues caused the campaign to dissolve, putting it back on me to DM once again, in order for our group to stay together. The new player slash DM moved away, so it was at least an amicable parting. One of the other guys in the group decided to step up to give me a break. It was his first time DMing. He did not do voices, didn't have a rich lore for his world or complex maps, but what he did have was imagination and the desire to make it a fun experience for all of us. Outside the game, this was one of the worst periods of my entire life. I was battling some crippling depression, had some issues at home with my marriage, and a very hostile situation at work. I was in no position to DM, and honestly was barely checked into our games as a player. That will become more relevant later. I settled on a tiefling warlock, Pact of the Chain. My familiar, a smart-ass imp named Rannon. My tiefling was simply named Defiance. My fellow players did not know, but I had worked it out with the DM ahead of time, that my patron had split and fractured my soul into two. Defiance was very vanilla and boring, but Rannon the imp familiar was full of life, vivacious, witty, and had a steady stream of insults always at the ready. In a way, it was very much an emulation of my real-life situation. The party was always a bit weary of my character, especially because the imp was a real mischievous bastard. He was unpredictable, loud, insulting, but definitely useful, and kept everyone on their toes. Defiance was always apologizing for the imp, but no one ever really knew that Rannon was the unbridled emotional side of my actual soul, manifested into this annoying imp. But the real reason they were suspicious of me is that my character was a warlock, openly using magic in a world where magic was strictly illegal and punishable by death. However, being a former slave, Defiance had nothing left to live for, except for turning the barbarous slavers inside out, a mission the others in the party also shared. Throughout the campaign, the new DM was dropping some hints and lore about my patron, along with some clues about how I could rejoin my soul together in order to make me a whole and actual person again. Obviously, this was something my character was very interested in, perhaps even more so than destroying the institution which victimized him. We had been running this campaign for over a year, and I was finally coming out of my depression. Anyone who's ever dealt with depression knows it's not something you snap out of. You slowly come out of it, but some days you feel terrible and other days you can scrape together some energy to do things. But the better days were becoming more frequent. Defiance began to grow a sneaking suspicion that his patron was an archdemon, whose plan was destroying the world's pantheon of deities. We had worked up to being around 16th level at this time, so I had the ability to speak with my patron when needed. I did this and asked him directly if he was an archdemon, attempting to overthrow the pantheon. He said yes and that I, as his servant, was obligated to help him or he would never restore my soul. I asked him what he wanted me to do and he told me to slay my party members as they were a threat to his plans. Do that and your soul will be restored. This offer was very tempting. First of all, my party had not exactly been gracious or welcoming to Defiance and sort of treated him like an unwanted stepchild. They slowly learned about his soul fracture and any time I was interested in pursuing a means to restore my soul, they always had more important things to do. After giving it some serious thought, Defiance told his patron to get bent. He reasoned that his patron's gifts were not benevolent, but powerful enough to enslave him and others, making him actually worse than the slavers on the material plane who took his agency. The archdemon pulled a shimmering silver string from my soul and severed it, as the DM put it, cutting me off from all my arcane power he once gifted me. I was now simply a level 16 peasant, the following day, my group was gearing up to traverse to a holy temple, where they believed they could open a portal to the astral plane in order to prevent the archdemon from exacting his plan. And dressed in plain clothes with no imp by my side, broke the news I was not going to be able to accompany them. They asked why not, and I explained to them what happened. The reaction was genuine, as the DM and I role-played the interaction with my patron privately. The party was moved by my sacrifice and understood the implications of me foregoing the possibility of having my soul restored by refusing to kill them in their sleep. My best friend in real life is a dude named Will. People could live 10 lifetimes and still never have as true of a friend as this guy. 
He's the most patient, most forgiving, most ethical, and most genuine person I've ever met. His character was a half-orc barbarian named Aid, who was unflinchingly brave, strong, and principled. The entire campaign, Aid did not care for defiance, and certainly did not trust him, but Aid witnessed what had just transpired, and how it all went down, and he was moved nearly to tears. The Holy Temple can wait, Aid proclaimed to the group. We have to do something more important first. Aid explained in light of Defiance's sacrifice and proving both his loyalty and genuineness to the group that he was going to return the favor. He was going to petition his orc ancestors to be my new patron and restore my power in order to defeat my previous patron. Defiance was moved and asked how he would petition his ancestors. You're going to have to kill me, Aid said. What? Defiance asked. You'll have to kill me, Aid repeated. It's the only way I can speak directly with my ancestors. I'll definitely tell them I'm not ready to join them but I am only temporarily crossing over to tell them the story of your sacrifice and how they must help you by empowering you with the fury and might of all the orc clans. Earlier in the campaign, we pilfered a scroll of resurrection we were hanging onto for a dire situation. Aid said I could drive a sword through his heart, ending his life, and then use the scroll of resurrection to bring him back. While he's dead, he will petition his ancestors to loan me their power. Our group plays with a few optional rules, and one of them is Matt Mercer's rule that when performing a resurrection, you roll a d20, and on a nat 1, the spell fails, and the character is permanently dead. So my best friend Will was willing to put his level 16 character on the line for me. In-game, Aid also knew there was a chance resurrection would not work, and so the risk was small but real. Defiance said he was not comfortable with the arrangement, and could not ask Aid to do it. Aid insisted it was not my decision but his own. So we went through with it. I plunged a dagger into his heart, ending his life. Will and the DM roleplayed his discussion with his ancestors, and it was very moving as a player to listen to. When it was completed, we cast Resurrection, and the roll was a 12. Aid was returned. We are now brothers, he said in game. Later that night, the orc ancestors visited me, filling me with their power and transforming me at once to a level 16 Hexblade Warlock. It was a complete and total transformation. Strictly speaking, patrons of the Shadowfell have to sponsor Hexblades, but the new DM was loving the progression so much, he allowed the bending of the rules. Fast forward a few adventures and we all hit level 20. We were in the astral plane marching upwards towards the Temple of the Gods, fighting hordes of lesser demons along the way. Defiance was frightening as a Hellblade. I specced him for pure combat, as he was now a tiefling on a mission, hell-bent, no pun intended, on destroying his treacherous former patron. We finally meet. Our group is tired from fighting our way through his minions, but we were here. The final fight of the campaign, and it was a slog. It had been going for over two hours in actual time, and everyone was tired in-game and out. Almost all of our spell slots had been spent. Two of our party members were down, including Aid, and we were all running low on hit points. Even though it's a 4th edition mechanic, we also have a house rule of announcing when a creature is bloodied, meaning half their hit points are gone. New DM had announced the Archdemon to be bloodied at 375 HP, so we knew he had 750, and we were very close. I had one first level spell slot remaining, and only about 11 hit points. I had the Archdemon marked with my Hex Curse, and knew I could end him with a critical hit. So I used my first level slot to cast Misty Step, 30 feet above his head. I plunged downward and rolled the dice. Nat 19. A crit because of the Hex Curse. I drove the blade through my former patron's head. I'll be taking my soul back now, I whispered in his ear as I twisted the blade into his skull, dropping him dead. I stood covered in the blood of my fallen former patron, with my soul restored, both in game and out. In real life, it was a very cathartic moment for me. It was poetic and unplanned. It came down to the wire, but it was also restorative. From an allegorical perspective, I had been enslaved in real life. I had been a victim to some very unfortunate circumstances, both in my marriage and in my job. Depression had really torn apart my soul. My best friend Will helped carry me through it. He was always there for me, always willing to help, always willing to talk, and in a lot of ways actually saved my life. I've only told a few people this story, and from my group, only the new DM and Will knew how profound this whole experience was for me. I'm pleased to report things are much better now. My wife and I work things out, and the situation at home is the best it's been in years. I was able to extricate myself from an abusive work situation and get some help in therapy. I'm actually DMing a campaign for our group now and it's going well. I don't want this to sound too sappy, but it's the truth. The experience was a good lesson for me. No matter what this world is doing to you, fight back. Don't let the demons destroy you. With whatever you can and however you can, don't give up. Slay those demons and take your soul back. 
I'm a firm believer that D&D is just group therapy with dice. This story perfectly identifies the soul of D&D, an adventure both in and out of game, a place where you can be the real you. I'm so glad they shared this wonderful story with us. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel All Things D&D. Our videos are posted every Tuesday and Friday, so stay tuned for more amazing Dungeons & Dragons content.